Does anyone see a problem with this? Is this enabling her? As a longtime MMO player, the grind is just part of the journey. Riding from place to place to get Aether Currents. There's a term I've recently been made aware of when it comes to couples and driving. The term is called Passenger Princess. For those that don't know, as I didn't, and I had to have it explained to me by my boys, a passenger princess is internet slang for a girl who's always being driven around while she sits in the passenger seat. And in Final Fantasy XIV, it seems that's truly the way of things. Gotta go this way. I'm a passenger princess. <laughs> my waifu, being much younger in levels than me, doesn't have the knowledge of the maps or a sense of adventure in gaming as, to be honest, she's really playing this for me. Thanks, girl. You can see some of our history of FF14 in the top corner to see what I'm talking about. But are there advantages and disadvantages to this? Will this actually help her in the long run, or am I just setting her up for failure and disappointment? Oh man, let's talk about this. On the plus side, I do enjoy seeing how cute she looks sitting in my black regala from Final Fantasy XV. Dang, I love her. But it's got to be more than that though. One of the positive things in driving her around everywhere is helping her achieve her goals faster. Much faster. Back in 2019, Yoshi P announced that they were cutting some of the fat in a Realm Reborn's MSQ. Here's an infographic I found online to show how many quests they removed from 2.0. In addition to this, a lot of the quests were made shorter, less tedious. They confirmed in a letter from the producer that when they release 5.3, they're also going to adjust the MSQ. Now, despite the reworking, the MSQ can still seem long and drawn out. There are a total of 846 MSQ quests that take us from the beginning of A Realm Reborn all the way to 6.4. Holy crap, that's insane. And that doesn't include mandatory jobs or side quests, just the main scenario quests. We're talking hundreds of hours of gameplay. Thus, for her to catch up to me and her boys, whatever we can do to make the journey more pleasant and enjoyable, faster and more efficient, the better. Secondly, the world of Eorzea, or Atheris as some are calling it, it's such a beautiful place. From the oceans to the mountains, the cities to the villages, the place is so diverse and eye-poppingly beautiful. I always wonder if people stop and just take in the scenery. Do you? Tell me below which region and spot you love the most. When running from quest to quest, place to place, it's so easy to forget all the wonder around you because you're focusing on getting to point B while avoiding any mobs that just slow you down. So for her, she loves seeing the trees, mountains, cityscapes and skylines without having to worry about her buttons, mobs, or if she's heading in the right direction. Remember, as a non-gamer, she really does this for me, so I want to make this as painless as possible. Enjoy the view, girl. It really is amazing. I enjoy having her as my passenger princess so she can relax and enjoy the ride knowing that she isn't going to get lost or feel like she's a heel and slowing us down. She can just sit there. Talk about her rotation, talk about the quests, and focus on enjoying herself, her outfits, her weapons. How can you go wrong with that? Well, maybe you can. And maybe I have. On the downside, it does create a small problem of not knowing the world as intimately as you can. When I first started playing, I got lost in Lins and Laminsa trying to get all my crafting quests done. From trying to find the fishing quest givers to finding where the smithy is. But I'll tell you, after getting lost, wandering around, it did help me find everything. She's never been lost because she's always had someone like me leading her around. I'm always with her. Understanding boat routes? Unnecessary. I teleport her. Attuning to Aether Crystals around the map? No problem. I'll take her right to them. Which leads to our second problem, hand-holding. Not just in getting lost or going from place to place, but also learning dungeons. Understanding your rotation better and feeling a sense of pride in doing it yourself. Like in the real world, in video games as big as this, you need an independent spirit to get a full understanding of the game, why things are the way they are, and I'm worried that I'm robbing her of this. Which lastly, can then turn to playing this game from a fun adventure to an obligation as you wait for your partner to show up and take you around. Like I said at the beginning, enabling. So how do I reconcile these negatives and positives? Maybe I'm overthinking it. I guess for me and my waifu, it's pretty simple. She wouldn't even be playing this game if it wasn't for me. And that's okay. I've come to accept that this is our playstyle and it works for us. Like I've mentioned in other videos, I have one son who skips through all the cutscenes because he just likes the battles. And I've got another son who takes his time because he reads and watches everything. Both enjoy the game and we all enjoy doing this together. She enjoys being driven around and being taken care of and I enjoy doing this for her. That's us. 
Now, everything aside, I am truly blessed that she enjoys spending time with me in the game, as well as entering my world and getting to know a different side of me. That's amazing. And if I'm driving her around in the car like I do in the real world, I get the same comfort from it, going from place to place with my passenger princess. Nothing beats that.